Hello guys, welcome to another React tutorial for beginners. In this video, we are going to look at one of the ways you can handle response error that is coming from the backend or external API. The type of error we are going to look at is invalid input error. Take for example, create user form where the person that is trying to create a user has to impute first name, last name and age and the person did not impute first name or perhaps the person imputed wrong value for age. What will happen is that when you submit the form, the backend is going to validate that input, the request, and return with error data if the input is incorrect. Oftentimes, this error response comes with status code 422 or 400, depending on how the backend or whatever API you are calling, implemented it. So there's no fixed rule on the status code or response structure that the backend will eventually return. For the purpose of this demonstration, I have this simple React application. What is happening here is that I'm calling the backend API that I'm using to create user to submit this form. Since there is no fixed rule on what the backend might return as error response. I've created our own backend using Spring Boot. So this is my Spring Boot application that is currently running. Here I have two endpoints, one for create user and the other one to find user by ID. But we are just going to focus on this one, right? Like I've mentioned, there's no fixed structure when it comes to error response. One backend might return different structure from the other backend or one API to other API. But for this demonstration, I've tried to return two different structures that I think are common, the kind of responses you'll be getting for validation error. We're going to see those two different structures in this demonstration. By the way, our focus is not on Spring Boot, so I'm just going to close this minimize this and we go back to react project now let me show you what this error response coming from the backend is like the first structure let me go ahead and submit this form when i do that i get error response with status code 400 this is the response we are getting from the backend there is a bunch of information here what we need to do is to handle this error that is coming from the backend and show the user user-friendly message of what went wrong. By the way, this error that is printed here is from this line, this console.log here. I am making use of Exios, which is popular when working on React project or JavaScript um, front-end application. Then down here, I'm sending a request post request with axios.post to the backend URL for creating user with the payload, which is whatever that is imputed in the form. So here I want to grab everything and send that as payload to the backend. Then when there's an error, because we are making use of axios, I can do console.log of error.response and we see all this information, the error response coming from the backend. Our interest, the one we are interested in mostly is the data field. So this data, let me expand that. When I expand the data field, you can see we have a bunch of information here. We have error that says this is bad request. Then we have errors. This one is an array that contains the detailed error message for the request, the validation error messages. I will expand one of these, the first item here. So this has even more information. We are not interested in all the information here, or at least the end user is not interested in all this. What you want to do is to extract the information the user should be interested in and show the user the error message. For that, we are interested in, the, in this message field that says your last name is required. This is for last name than we have for other fields. So how do we do this? This is actually straightforward. The moment we have grabbed the error coming from the backend, 
we just apply the basic JavaScript we already know to put that error in the structure where we can easily display it for the user to see. For displaying the error, I have this helper function. I'll go to the function called get response error. So this is a helper function I have created to put the error response in an easy, in a way that is easier to work with. Let me explain what is happening here. First, we check if error is null or undefined. We just return null, right? That return statement, I will come back to this for in a moment. Here we have this state, use state, error, set error. And down here, I'm going to call set error, calling the get response error, which is this, this helper function here. The helper function is going to format, put the error in the structure we want it, and we can just do set error. At the end of the day, this is going to give us an object like this, like uh, first name, this is required, and then last name, you get the message. So when we call this function, it is going to do all the work and return something like this. And then we can put that inside our error object, the state object. Then down here in the form, I'm trying to display the error, if any error, for the respective fields. So, for example, if there is a last name error like we have seen here, it is going to be displayed using this um, component. I have this component that takes a message and displays the message. It is as simple as that. All right, I will get to this message in a moment, but let me go back to the function and continue the explanation. So this is our function. If it's not undefined, return no. Then we check if error.response, which is this guy here, the entire thing here. If we have it, the next thing we want to check is the status code. If the status code is 400, because we know that our backend returns 400 for our input validation error. It can be 422, that is unprocessable entity, can be 400 bad request. Once again, it is not fixed. It depends on what the API you are calling returns. That is one. Then we want to check if this data field exists. The data field is this very one here, this data field. Because inside the data field is where we have the validation errors we are interested in. All right, so I'll go back here. If the data field exists, then we want to get error.response.data.errors. Error.response.data.errors, which is this array here. If we have it, then we can just go ahead and put that inside an object. We loop through this array of errors. Let me pick one of them, for example. And we identify the field that has the error, and then we put the message. So for this, our object, the key will be the field that is, in this example, last name. And the value will be the error message something of this nature. I'll copy that guy and come over here, put it last name and copy the message and put the message there. So this is the structure we are going to get at the end of the day with this loop. The field and the message is going to give us something like this for all the fields that have error. And at the end, we just return that object and that object when we call set error is what will be set as our error data this error data here and once again this guy kicks in to display any error available all right so let's try this one more time go to that inspect console clear everything now i am calling the set error that means when there's error response we expect that to be displayed here. 
I'm going to submit this form again. You can see that this time we get the error messages, right? Let me say that let's assume that I have the username field. I will submit again. We get only the last name. Let me put the age, submit. We get only the only the last name. Yeah. All right. So this our validation helper is working, and this time we can show the user user-friendly error messages so they know what is wrong and do the correction and submit correct input so i mentioned that i have two different structures for this demonstration that is two different error response structure coming from the back end i want to quickly show you the second structure but the idea is just the same you just grab the error response find out the validation fields and put them in whatever way it might not necessarily be the way it is done here anyhow you want to transform the data the goal is to show the user user friendly message right for the second case i'm going to head over to my spring boot application and tweak things a little bit i will save this and the application will restart that is the back end all right wait for that to restart restarted now when i try to submit this form again we are going to get error response but different structure so it means that the current our current helper function is not going to handle that correctly i will submit the form again you can see we get error response but nothing is shown to the user that is because the structure is different it looks similar to what you have before but let's go into data you can see that we don't have errors before we had errors array this time we have something very close to what this helper function is trying to do we have object for example we have age and then we have the message we have first name last name but the messages are inside an array before it was the key then string this time it is the key array right this is another common pattern you see when working on real projects so how do we handle this it is still simple the good thing is that we have access to the error data we just transform it the way we want what i'm going to do here is simple i'm going to head over to the function instead of returning now here I want to check something for the first case we see that that is an array so i want to check if response errors which refers to the first case and array dot is array if it is an array we know that we are dealing with the first structure the first case if that's the case we go ahead and deal with the first case Otherwise, we know we are dealing with this second case. And this second case is actually straightforward. We have error.response.data, which will take us to this data here. We just return that because that fits the object structure we are trying to construct here. I will save that and let me try to submit the form again. Um, I don't know why I didn't get the message let me check okay i think i'm missing something yeah so it's supposed to be error.response.data.error which will take us to the error itself right so i'm gonna come here and say error i will submit the form again this time we get the same validation message like before now you have one question how does how is this still working seeing that the field is an array before this was a string and now it is an array the reason this is an array is because sometimes one field can have multiple errors for example uh, something that says that age must be numeric and age must be greater than zero right it means that age can have multiple validation error messages that is why we have this structure here then for displaying the error let me just take you to the component this is the component so this component is checking if the message 
if the message is array then just map and display it this is the current case the second case we are dealing with where the message is an array if however it is the first case that is just a single value we just display the message that is why our, our component here still works now i'm going to quickly tweak something at the back end to show you um a quick example of multiple message for the same field over to the back end let me add one more row for last name so i'll say at just any row for us to see multiple validation errors for one field i will save this and wait for the server to restart the server is up so i'll go back here and try to submit this form again you can see that now we have multiple errors for the same field that is for last name that explains or makes it clear the purpose of array as the as the error message value that should be down here down here data errors you can see that for last name we have two items in the array all right guys we have seen one of the ways we can handle backend response errors for validations one thing to note here is that you don't really need to know the backend or api how it is implemented and all that right it is none of your business the framework or technology running at the back end all we need to know is to check the api documentation or see the inspect the error response see the data being returned and we can transform it to whatever structure we need the goal is to show the user user friendly error message so they understand what went wrong and make corrections i hope this makes sense until next time enjoy coding